Hey, while you're reading this disclaimer, why don't you make a nice hot cup of cocoa while watching this review? Ah, oh, it's such a beautiful day at this lovely home, knowing that a fellow man named Reese is at work doing his usual stick of making videos for fun on the website. As you can see him right now on his little chair, he's not there, isn't he? Hang on a second, I think I located him. There he is. Now, what on earth are you doing, Reese? Just staring into the endless abyss, waiting for a miracle to happen. Oh, come on, man. You can't just sit there for the rest of your life. And do what? I can't do anything outside since we're stuck in quarantine for God knows how long. Well, instead of just sitting there and doing absolutely nothing, why don't you do another movie review? Oh, yeah, and people will totally take a look at that, what I had to say about it when they're obviously not paying attention to it because I'm not that interesting. Oh, jeez, you're being ridiculous. Right, if you don't do something right now, I'm going to shock you with my bolt of lightning! <coughs> <coughs> okay, um, um... Well, I do know one. What's that? Do you know a little animated movie called The Little Polar Bear? What? Never heard of it! Exactly! Surprisingly, no one on the internet has talked about this animated feature yet, have they? Guess I'm the first. Look at me. Released in 2001 by Warner Bros. Pictures, this film follows the adventures of a polar bear enjoying life, making friends, while also dealing with situations along the way. The film itself is based on a series of books wrote by Hans D. Beer? That sounds like someone who got drunk last night while trying to think of a child's name. But nevertheless, the book was released in Dutch first, so that's why all the characters have their names like that. So, put on your warm scars as we take a look at the Little Polar Bear Movie. We begin our film with a group of polar bears hunting for food in the frosted land, while also lurking near the seals, which I must explain that the seals and the polar bears don't like each other in this story. Why? I'm not quite sure. I don't know if there's actually a law or anything in this film explaining why they don't like each other. It just comes across as natural. Let me guess, it's trying to teach us not to be prejudiced, isn't it? I thought so. But anywho, back to the story. As the four of them focus on the target, a group of seals try to tell one of the polar bears named Marco that he is now a father. I'm a father! Alright, I'm a father! I have a new baby boy! Have I got news for you? I have a... Uh... You have a son! I knew that, I just couldn't think of the word. Oh, real nice job, buddy. You blew the plan. You blew it! We then cut to see the young polar bear named Lars as he goes up playing around in the snowy land, as he soon stumbles across his friend Greta, seeing that he's trying to catch some fish. You want to do something together? Sure, like what? Well, we could visit the igloo. Oh, please, not again. You have a better idea? Let's go for a swim. How can he be so big and still not be able to swim? He hasn't learned how to swim? Doesn't this place have like a school or something? The kid has to learn, you know! Well anyway, he later comes across four lemmings trying to put their heads in the snow because their life is gloomy. I guess it's their way of suffocating to death. Watch this! Whoa! You have to try this, Lars! I don't know. Come on, there's nothing to be afraid of! Wow, you really suck at snowboarding. Go back to school if they have any. He soon spotted a seal in the water as he tries to catch it, but unfortunately falls in the water because he can't swim. But he luckily gets saved. Here, this is for you. For me? Gee, thanks. I'm Robbie. So the seal's name is Robbie, because I know another seal in a stop-motion television series also named Robbie, so, um... There's gonna be a lawsuit, isn't there? Naturally, the two start playing with each other and soon bond a friendship. While that's happening, the two are being watched by a human named Lena and her dog as she returns home to tell her grandma all about it. Grandma! Grandma! Yes, Lena. I'll give you three guesses what I saw today. Only three? Yes. Was it the Snow Queen? I thought the town said that we must never speak of her again after what she did to that young child! 
Oh, that's a nice little drawing of a polar bear and a seal you did there. But I could do it just like that, only better. Okay, just fit over here, and fit over there, and can't forget this part, it's a very important part. Oh, don't forget that, it's an extra bit of detail, and that, and that, and done! What? That is perfect. Papa! My friend and I are right in the middle of this great game. Can I please stay outside and play with them a little bit longer? I suppose it's alright, son. I promise, polar bear's word of honor. <laughs> And a seal's word of honor, too. Thank you! What? A seal? Son, why didn't you tell me that your friends were a seal? Get back here, Lars! So what do you think? Great view, huh? Oh, you bet! Amazing! How did you find this spot? My father showed it to me. And then he probably told you that everything the light touches is our kingdom. But just then, they spotted Robbie's parents and the rest of the seals are going to be in great danger. So they tried calling out for them, but no luck prevailed. It of course stops them, but they started to now chase after them instead. What? How does that work? The hole was basically too small for them. No polar bear that size would squeeze through that length of space. They're gone, Lars. Lars? Where are you? Huh? Man, what a lovely picture frame. Too bad it's not important to the story, but at least we have that little painting on that wall. Robbie soon finds Lars in a hole as he finds a collection of hats in a chest. But later that night, his father tries to explain to him that having a seal and a polar bear being friends isn't natural. But he just storms off in a huff. Oh well, you tried, Mucker. Or however you pronounce your name. Well, that's it then. You take good care of yourself. It's alright, Lars. I'll just go and probably make friends with a penguin and see where I go from there. I'm setting sail. Out to sea? Yes. I'm off to a country where we can always be friends. You do realize that ship is stuck on frozen ice, so it can't go anywhere, you know. This, of course, leads into an argument about how predators befriend their prey, which leads to the lemmings putting their heads in the ground again. Which still sounds like something came to death. But one of them falls down, which luckily gets saved by a penguin named Caruso, who the lemmings enjoy having him around, because they think he can teach him how to fly, which he's not really good at, as shown later on, and he also can sing, because... I don't know, the writers were probably tired by this point. Waggle your wings and fly in the air, some nerve is all it takes! Waggle your wings and fly in the air and see that... Stop that, stop that! You're not going into a song while I'm here. The two demonstrate on how it can work. If they can work together to catch fish, they will have more fish to eat. This surprisingly convinces everybody as they now live under a new rule of polar bears and seals working together in harmony. But the next morning, something tragic happens as the ice soon broke and drift Lars out to sea. Lars! Have you seen Lars? Mika? He was out playing with you, wasn't he? No! I mean, he was, but then he disappeared. Well, this wouldn't have happened if you kept a close eye on him. And stayed awake in the process. Now, what's the problem? Lars has disappeared. Don't get so agitated. He'll be back. It's always better to hope than to despair. If you never give up, you can never be defeated. Really? If you want to be a pie, you will have to learn to fly. How would learning how to fly gonna solve this problem of the fact that there's a lost kid out there for crying out loud? Help me find Lars, please. All right, we'll do it. But can you at least give us the general direction where we can start looking? Yeah, to the south. As you can see here, the polar bear is struggling with the strong stormy waves as he desperately tries to stay in his little ice raft for protection, which unfortunately he has just lost it as he now climbs in into a CGI bow instead, so we won't question anything. As the bow drifts along the ocean waves, he arrives at a tropical place which is not named for no reason at all. 
Maybe he's in Africa or something. He comes across a hippo named Henry as he soon starts showing him around the place. <laughs> oh look! He can swim now! That's fantastic! Now all we have to do next is to teach Sonic how to swim! Without that intensive deaf music, of course. Isn't this something? Lars, this is my favorite spot. What do you think of this place? <laughs> Ooh, what is it? I was just thinking about the snow and Mama and Papa and Robbie. I wish they were here right now. Ah, <laughs> you're homesick. Well, what did you think I was crying about? Tears of joy? The next morning, Henry takes him to Marcus and Eagle to make sure he gets home smoothly. He does simply that and waves goodbye to Henry. But what he doesn't know that a ship nearby is secretly taking all the fish in the ocean. But that doesn't matter right now, because there's a reunion need to be celebrated. Lars! Robbie! Robbie! You're finally home! <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. So with Lars back and all of his friends and family happy about it, everything should be going back to normal, right? Well, actually, no, you're wrong, as it turns out that less fish are coming towards them, meaning that if this keeps up, they'll have no food to eat. Is it true? Are they all gone? They've disappeared. There's no choice. We'll have to go into the village to see if the humans have any fish. Sure, they might have food there, eh? unless they're having the same problem you're having, so there's a 50% chance of that plan. They arrived at the human village, but they're unwelcomed by two dogs, which sends Robbie back into the water and Lars hiding in their own home. And by guess, you mean a wild animal. It turns out that Lena doesn't have any fish either. So yeah, there's the backfire in your plan, mate. But she later attends at a gathering with her grandma, as they reveal what we've already known from a couple of minutes earlier, but they explain it again in the weirdest way possible. The black mouth is eating all our fish. 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 I fear things I don't want to fear. And this is one of them. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering why the ship is taking all the fish in the sea, they never explain it at all. So there's really no reason to why a ship full of fishermen is taking all the little fishies in the sea. I guess they must be doing it to sell more fish at their local fish and chip shop. So Lars returns home with information on his paws, but his father is disappointed at him for going into the human village. Those humans are extremely dangerous. They've taken most of the fish from the ocean. No, Papa, their nets are empty. They haven't caught anything either. I don't believe that mm. for one second. But you have to believe me, Papa. The one that is doing it is the Black Mouth. Lars, I've never heard such garbage in all my life. Come on, Pops, your son's telling the truth. You just gotta listen to him. There's a big mighty ship hanging straight towards your little ice kingdom of bears and you're probably gonna die of starvation if you don't do anything about- And they never listen. But suddenly, out of nowhere, the ship causes the ice breaking apart, resulting in everyone falling into the water and trapped. Except for Lars. I'll lure that monster over to the big rock. And then what? That, 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 that's it? That, that, that's your plan? That's your plan to help save the animals? There's gotta be more than that! You gotta analyze the plan a bit more than just one thing on your mind, you know? Elsewhere, Caruso sees that Lars is in trouble and tries to go off and save him, only having him nearly to be hit by Lars' friends. What a disastrous hit, ladies and gentlemen. For that, he only scores a zero for not being able to fly. He won't be getting a medal anytime soon for his bravery. Back with Lars, the ship's mouth finally catches up to him and traps him. But his friends arrive just in time as Greta grabs Lars and swims out of there just in time as the ship soon collides with a massive rock. Uh, 
Um, aren't there supposed to be humans on that ship? Because why else there be a ship floating around the sea? Be weird enough that they don't show the humans at all. They don't show what happens to the humans on that ship. Wow, what the actual hell movie? You just can't do that. You can't just leave them to die like the Titanic. You just can't. So the seals, polar bears, and fish are released, Lars is safe and claimed a hero, and everyone is happy that their homes are now safe and sound from the evil shit. What's in the world? Lars? Lars? <sighs> so, was the whole thing a dream? Let me tell you, I had the strangest dream. All through the dream, everywhere I went, I saw this little white bear, and he... No, come to think of it, I better not tell you. Well, Lena, it happens that some dreams do come true. You mean my dream is... <gasps> yeah! Hooray! <laughs> oh, it wasn't a dream. If it actually was, that would have been a real slap in the face to the audience in Super Mario 2. Thus, we end the film with everyone having a good swim in the water, and Lars seeing Lena and her dog waving at him, knowing that she thanked him for what he did. So that is the Little Polar Bear movie, and what are my final thoughts on it? Well, to say the least, it's harmless in its own way. With the story I thought was simple at first, but when it got to the part about the black ship, it just went a bit complicated. I can't even know what the message of the story is. Even though we got the not to be prejudiced to each other done, I don't fully know what the actual message is. The animation on the other hand is quite nice to look at. With all the shadings and the colours, it looks like something that popped out of a storybook. It's really fascinating. But hey, like I said, it's harmless, and you could probably get an enjoyment out of it, and appreciate the work that went into this movie, especially me. In total, this movie gets a 7 out of 10, and I recommend checking it out. Thank you for watching today's review, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time.